does my body, water my blood, air my breath and fire my spirit, earth my body, water my blood, air my breath and fire my spirit. The greatest journey we will ever make is the small distance from our head back to our hearts. These words remind us that we live in a world where the masculine energy of the mind has been idolized and put on a pedestal, while the more feminine energy of feeling, which arises in the heart and body, has been denigrated and much misunderstood. Our task is to journey back to the heart so that we might re-establish the balance between the masculine and feminine, the heart and mind, to catalyze the union of the divine masculine and feminine within our hearts. Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Bring Him Home Sacred Masculinity Rising podcast series which is our time and space to explore some principles, stories and experiences of what it looks like to walk the road and embody the sacred masculine. My name is Miguel Dean and I'm the author of Bring Him Home, a twin flame love story, which is my true story of a conscious, passionate, loving relationship with an awesome woman and how it played a significant role in the rising of my own sacred masculinity and the courageous journey that I embarked on from my head back to my tender heart. My intention is that through sharing my personal love story in the book and creating this podcast series, I will catalyze the divine twin flame union within the hearts of many men and women so that we can create a more beautiful world for our children and the generations to come. Find out more about my book and the rest of my work at my website, which is migueldean.net. So, the third principle which we're going to touch on today is essentially about emotional intelligence. The principle is, I am deepening my emotional intelligence daily in my journey from my head back to the heart. So what does this mean, making that journey from the head back to the heart? And why is it so rare, especially amongst men? Well, you've probably heard the adage before, big boys don't cry. And perhaps, you know, this alludes to the the, the reason, the explanation why so many people, and especially men, um, lose touch with their emotions and their feelings. We're, we're taught when we're young, um, we're shamed perhaps, not, not to feel uh, the negative emotions as if there is something wrong with that, when actually there really aren't any negative emotions. All emotions are a kind of internal compass, they're signposts, they're ways of um, our body guiding us towards and away from different choices or experiences. But what happens is that when we're shamed and we're told big boys don't cry and little, little girls are nice and behave nicely and sweetly, then you know, we suppress those emotions and gradually, bit by bit, we lose touch with the, with the full range of, of what it is to feel and we retreat into our heads um, and often just become talking heads, you know? The masculine energy is more of a mind energy and the feminine energy is um, generally more of a, a feeling, um, a heart, a, a body energy. So... In order to, you know, to, to become whole uh, and, and to step deeper into our sacred masculinity, we have to have the courage 
to to go back into our, our hearts to make that journey back and reconnect with the full spectrum of emotions uh, because they're you know that's what it is to be human and uh, i think probably well i don't think i i know the reason why the majority of people don't make that journey is because when we make our journey back to our hearts the first thing that we tend to encounter is all the unexpressed emotions and pain that was um, that was stored in our bodies in in our heart fields is sometimes described as armor rings we have these armor rings around uh, our heart to protect us and I know that I did this I, I put up I, you know I disconnected from my heart because it, it, because I'd experienced pain and, and trauma as a child losing my mother um, and the treatment at the hands of my stepmother and the uh, uh, you know the apparent abandonment by my father who was never there to protect me and, and keep me safe so it, there was you know there was a lot of pain but when we're young we can't always fully process all that pain we don't understand it and then we're shamed and we're told not to not to feel it i remember my you know m- my stepmom hitting me sometimes when when i was upset and i was showing emotions and she would say you know i'll give you something to cry for and then she would clout me and you know is it hardly surprising that we learn to suppress not to feel and so when we make that journey back to our hearts that is the first thing that we encounter we encounter all those feelings but you know unfortunately there isn't a sort of like a you know, a, a two-way valve system that means that we can block out the pain, but we can experience the joy and bliss. Because those armor rings, that wall around the heart, you know, it stops the feeling of being fully alive and feeling, feeling fully joy and connection and the awe and the beauty uh, and, and the miracle of what it is to be alive. So as we dissolve those armor rings around the heart make that journey back to the heart and feel those feelings that were uh, that needed to be expressed from perhaps you know perhaps from years uh, in, in our childhoods years ago then we also begin to access the joy and the beauty and we begin to wake up more to become more fully alive so this is the this is the journey of the the sacred masculine to make that journey back to the heart and where you first have to stand your ground and feel what you didn't feel at the time of of the trauma or the challenges but then the rewards start coming and we begin to feel more connected you know if we don't if we don't feel those emotions what often happens is we're like a you know if you imagine a bottle of coca-cola that has been shaken up and it's all fizzy uh, it, 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 we're, we're like that the whole time and the slightest thing just means that we overflow and froth over everywhere because we've got all this old anger and pain and resentment and shame and, and guilt and jealousy uh, all bottled up inside us so one little thing happens in, in you know in our day-to-day life and it and it just tips us over the edge our society is riddled with you know with methods and techniques to avoid feeling you know we numb it our feelings with with drugs with coffee with alcohol with you know with pharmaceuticals Uh, we keep busy we busy 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 because when you're busy doing you don't feel so much Uh, we over exercise we go to the gym we get addicted to, to 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 pornography or shopping or food or sex all these things stop us from feeling And when we make our journey back to the heart and we have the courage to feel and to release and to empty that reservoir of old feelings, then the addictions and so on just begin to fall away because they have no, they have no place. When we don't feel what we need to feel, you know, the emotional energy, that toxic energy that's trapped inside us is probably the most, um, predominant factor in physical disease and illness if you think about it the word disease is dis-ease it's lack of ease here's a short poem for you which 
really describes the truth of what emotions are about. It's by Rumi, the Sufi mystic, and it's called Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. This is the, the, the truth of our emotions. You know, when we've emptied that reservoir of past emotions and we become more fully alive, then, you know, it's not that we stop feeling what, what are perceived as negative emotions. Those emotions are signposts. Uh, they're guides sent from beyond uh, to serve us. So it's to, it's to welcome them. Now, these days when, when I'm feeling... Uh, discomfort or a sadness sometimes I don't know where it's coming from but I know my practice is just to feel it just to feel the sensation of that emotion in my body to stay with it as best I can and not distract myself or busy myself or numb myself with something just to feel it without the mind judging it or you know telling a long story about you know why we shouldn't be feeling whatever we're feeling giving ourselves a hard time for having a hard time switch the mind off when it's being unhelpful just just let it go and don't bring your attention to the mind just bring your attention to the feeling in the body and pretty quickly it, you will find that it dissolves it evaporates it leaves it's just energy it's just a sensation it's the thoughts that we attach to these emotions that make it difficult for uh, you know for us to be with them emotional intelligence essentially is the capacity to be aware of to to control and to express our emotions which enables us to handle interpersonal relationships with with more empathy and more compassion you know we have to if we can't feel how can we feel if we can't feel for ourselves or allow ourselves the full spectrum of feeling how, how can we expect to um, empathize and, and to and to build relationships significant relationships with others and let's face it the quality of life is essentially about our relationship with others our, our relationship with ourselves and our relationships with the planet but this all is comes back to you know being able to feel being able to feel another to feel if often we don't like other people expressing these perceived negative emotions because it just mirrors the sadness or the negative emotions inside ourselves. The sacred masculine can sit and hold space for somebody, doesn't matter what they're feeling, how much pain they are in. He can just sit and be unmoved like uh, the, the eye of a storm. Because he honours and he the, the the emotions, he honours the place that that person is without it triggering that sadness inside him. Because that sadness isn't there anymore, he knows that these negative emotions have their place. These painful emotions, these uncomfortable emotions, and that they are to be honoured. So, what happens when we? come to this place where we are more in connection with our heart and there's a balance between the mind and heart. I'm not talking about, you know, let's come back to our heart and just the feeling and as if the mind or the ego is a negative thing. It's not. It's we, we come back to a balance, but often we need to put more emphasis on the heart because it's been so neglected. It's the feminine, more of a kind of feminine energy, the feelings, and the mind is more about the thoughts, which is more masculine. And we know that from patriarchy that there has been a lot more 
an emphasis on the those, those masculine energies. So we just to bring the balance back, we need to focus often on more of that heart energy, that feeling. And when we do that, the prize is that we begin to feel the connection with all of life, with all of ourselves, because we are all of life. We begin to feel the connection with others and we begin to feel the connection with nature and we begin to feel the interconnectedness of everything and how beautiful life actually is. So I'll share with you another of my poems, which illustrates this <laughs> interconnectivity rather well, I feel. The poem is called The All One Tree. Can you see the tree that stands alone on the hill? How complete she seems unto herself as you hurry by. But slow down, pause a while and look again. See how her shore branches reach out and merge with the light infinity of sky. See how she makes love with the gentle breeze, caressed and fondled. She whispers her delight in the shimmering of her delicate leaves. See how the sun warms her and the frost adorns her different lovers who come to be with her for a while. How the raindrops fall upon her, trickling down her branches and trunk, <laughs> trickling down her branches and trunk into the soil to be drunk by her and released again into the sky to reunite with the shape-shifter clouds that float effortlessly by. Her leaves practice their alchemy, breathing in and breathing out, Silently, unobtrusively, wanting no applause or recognition, she stands humbly performing her magic. If you wait a while, you will see how the buzzard comes to rest in the safety of her branches, to look out on the majesty of creation. You will see how the finches and sparrows come to dine on the small creatures that have made their homes in the folds and sinews of her woody bark. The squirrels that scamper and chase along her elevated highways and the mice curled in their cosy nest in the folds where her roots meet her trunk. When the cold days come, she rests and relaxes and her leaves and energy fall. Down, down, down into her roots that twist and turn, held as they are, embraced in the cool darkness of the sacred earth. Can you see the tree that stands alone on the hill? Look a little closer, a little deeper, a little more slowly with the eyes of your heart, and she will remind you that you are never really alone. Perhaps the journey from the head back to the heart is the most important journey that we will ever make. It takes courage, but we don't have to do it alone. We can have support, we can allow others to share and to support us on our journeys. As this poem, The All One Tree, shows us, we're never truly alone, but we can only really know that when we make that journey back to our hearts, when we focus and put our energy into our emotional intelligence, into feeling again and becoming fully alive and balancing the mind and the heart. This leads us to a whole new place of union and connection with others and with our sacred planet. This is the work of the sacred masculine. So as always, I'd like to end this podcast episode with a blessing. This is the blessing from the front of my book, Bring Him Home, A Twin Flame Love Story. May the energy of this podcast be a catalyst for the union of the divine feminine and masculine energies within the hearts of all men and women. May we have the willingness and determination to make the journey from our heads back to our hearts. 
May we learn to father and mother ourselves and take care of our inner child. And may we remember what it is to love ourselves, each other, all sentient beings and this sacred earth for ourselves, our children and the generations to come. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Miguel Dean, catalyzing the twin flame union of the divine masculine and feminine energies within hearts of men and women. I'm the author of my new book, Bring Him Home, a twin flame love story, which is published by Sacred Stories Publishing and is available online through booksellers worldwide, or you can receive a personalized and signed copy from my website, if you like, migueldean.net. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this podcast and to join me next time, where we will explore the fourth principle of sacred masculinity, sacred masculinity, which is I honour, respect and nourish my physical body. Until we meet again, be well. <laughs>